Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we are fixing yet another build, this time an SR25 that I picked up on interchange at Hole in the Wall. So after hauling this one back to the stash, let's take a little look at this build. Now, I want to start off right from the beginning and talk about the suppressor, the SRD762. There were two versions of the SRD, and this one is probably one of the worst suppressors that you could use for the SR25 in general. I think the reason why people are tricked into using this sometimes is that it attaches directly onto the barrel, and it's basically the easiest one. Like, there are no other suppressors here in this first list because all of the other ones are combination muzzle brakes, which obviously takes a little bit more investigation and understanding to figure out which ones are good. So if we are staying on the theme of some kind of a you know budget SR25, not that that really exists because the gun itself is quite expensive, so normally lends itself more to meta modding. One of the better options for this is the other version of the SRD, which comes via the T-Lock. This is the one that you normally see on the MCX. This is the 300 blackout and 762 by 51 muzzle brake adapter. And once we stick that on, we can add this one, the SRD 762QD which is very slightly different. And this one you can actually buy using a barter on Skier once you get to Skier 4, but it's not that expensive necessarily on the flea market, probably about the same price as the regular SRD. The thing about this is that you not only get the stat bonuses from the SRD, which is 9% recoil reduction and only minus 24 ergonomics. If we compare this to the original SRD, this one is about the same, but with one less ergo. The reason why this one ends up being better is that you can add on the third part, which is one of these three, and people pretty much always add this one, the two port muzzle brake, which gives you another minus 6% recoil. So this makes it really quite good and a much better alternative to the regular SRD. So this is quite an easy and cost-effective combination to get, especially if you have the barter, but even if you don't, you can just buy this from the flea market. There is another alternative to this, which actually gives you one more ergo as well, and is really light. So I normally like this particular combination, which is the Thunder Beast. We've got the 30CB, the AR-10 Thunder Beast Arms Muzzle Break, and on top of this, we add the Ultra 5. The Ultra 5 has its own barter as well, which is a Tegela hat and two of these leather caps. So this one's cheaper on the fleet too. If you don't have the access for the traders, then you can just go and buy it on the flea market. And this one seems, you know, even cheaper. This is like 40k or something. And the Thunder Beast is one of my favorite suppressors, just for kind of a nice middle ground bang for buck. But as you can see already, we've gone to 46 ergonomics and 81 recoil. The major change here, if we go back and look at the original build, 47 ergo and 91 recoil, we've improved the recoil quite a bit. So 47 down to 46, we've lost one ergo, but we've changed this from 91 to 81, which is quite significant. With 10 recoil makes a big difference, and I know the new recoil model makes shooting easier, but 91 recoil is still not actually that great, whereas 81 is a lot more controllable. If you want to go meta, which is not really the purposes of this build because that's not what they've gone for originally, then you would go for the Knight's Armament. This is the QDC 762, and on top of that you'd put the PRS QDC, and this one gets to 46 and 78 instead. But we're going to leave it on the Thunder Beast just for the moment because I think this is more in keeping with the way that they built the gun originally. Next up, the URX Handguard and the AFG M-Lock for a budget build is honestly not that bad. Like, upgrading the Handguard when you don't want to spend too much money is really not the worst sin in the world. The URX is not the best, but it comes with the gun. So if you bought an SR25 or found one, then you might just want to keep it on because you're only going to be increasing the ergonomics by a little bit by changing over to another different Handguard. And the best in slot version, the RSAS for recoil really does hamper your ability to get ergonomics onto the weapon and it makes building a balanced gun quite difficult unless you spend a lot of money on it so i feel that keeping the urx on is honestly okay and in combination with this m-lock as well this is basically equivalent to an rvg black which is the same as an se5 which is probably the best grip in the game in my opinion except with one less ergonomics the one ergo what's that between friends right there's a small optimization that we can do in terms of the gas tube it depends on whether you feel like this is worth it. There's the CMMG, which comes from the Mutant, and this fits onto the SR25 as well. And this reduces the recoil by two. It is about 10,000 rubles, so it's up to you as to whether you think it's necessary, but it's strictly just better than the other one. So I'm going to put it on, at least for now, and that gets us down to 79 recoil. Now, the next one that I think is a really interesting choice is this thing, the F1 Skeletonized PC Pistol Grip. This one with the paracord on it is the meta grip for certain guns, but not all guns. So, for example, the M1A, this is the best grip that you can get. And the interesting part about this one is that you can't buy it from anywhere. It's purely on the flea market. Right now, they're actually quite cheap. These are normally 40k plus. 29,999 is a good price. So, you know, that's potentially an option to get. But what I would say is the SR25's meta grip, if you do have Peacekeeper 4, is the Growl. It doesn't cost that much, really. Obviously, it's more on the fleet, so you might want to buy something different if you don't have access to Peacekeeper 4. 
but usually I just stick this on everything if I can. And the strange thing about why they've chosen to put this on here is that it's normally expensive on the flea because it's the meta grip for another gun, but those other guns aren't the SR25. So if you want to make something budget, I think you're probably better off going for the Orion. Yes, it's one less ergonomics, but it's only 15k. As I said, the Paracord version of that F1 grip is really quite cheap at the moment, so they're about the same. The other alternative is this F1 ST2, and this one is the same as the Orion. This one costs very slightly more. You can get it from the fleet a little bit cheaper, um, but it's basically equivalent. So I don't know, the thing for me with these budget builds, usually I'd rather just go for something quite a bit cheaper. There's one ergo less rather than going for kind of the middle ground, if you know what I mean. Like I either want to build it meta or I want to build it budget rather than the kind of hash of the two, because otherwise you just end up spending money on stuff that is, isn't really worth it. So we're going to swap this back to the Orion for the time being. Now, the stock. I find this one very interesting. I don't normally use the SLK, kind of for the same reason as we were talking about a second ago. This is sort of a middle ground between budget and something that's actually good. Because if I was building a budget weapon, normally I would stick this on, the DS-150. And this does have one less ergonomics than the one that they've chosen here, the SLK. But it's a little bit cheaper. The SLK costs you $81, which is about 10,000 rubles, something slightly more than that. Whereas the DS-150 is only $66. So if I'm picking a budget build, I'm normally choosing the one which is slightly less ergonomics, but is a little bit cheaper. Because one ergo, again, it doesn't really make much difference. If you wanted to improve this and get something better, really the two meta stocks at the moment is either the Magpul MOE carbine stock, the MOEs, or one of the Daniels Defense ECBs. These two are the two meta stocks right now, and it depends on whether you're modding for recoil or for ergo. So for example, if we stick on the MOE and put the butt pad on, this gets us down to 78 recoil with 45 ergo. And if we swap over to the Daniels Defense instead, that one gets us to, and there's two pads for this, but I normally choose the thin one. That gets you to 49 ergo and 81 recoil. So it's really a balance. Neither of them are better than the other because the ergo to recoil ratio is about the same for both of them. So it purely depends on exactly how much down the recoil route you want to go with and how much ergo you want to go with, which we'll come on to in a second. One optimization that I always do like to make if I can is upgrading to the ARE. There is another better buffer tube. They're using the standard one at the moment, the carbine tube. The ATP is technically slightly better. This has minus one and a half recoil rather than minus one, but it doesn't really make enough difference to justify spending 5,000 rubles on it, I don't think. But you could upgrade to that if you want, if you don't have access to the ARE. Because the ARE is quite a lot better than the regular tube. This one has got two ergonomics and minus 2% recoil on it versus this one, which is literally just a minus 1% recoil. So it makes quite a big difference going to the ARE. And if I can, I always upgrade it to here. So let's just pop this on and put on the Daniel's Defense for the moment, just while we're looking through the rest of the optimizations. All right, so there's a, two other little things about this. We've got here the Knight Armament charging handle. We can get one ergonomics here really easily going to the Ambi charging handle. And I know I said that one ergo doesn't really make much difference, but it's only $9. So you may as well just get that. And then outside of that, we do actually have front and rear sights. The Knight's Armament folding sights do have plus one ergo on them. So this is not necessarily a problem. If the gun comes with these, I would keep them. But they're not the cheapest and they're not the lightest. The Defiance front and backs are the best ones to buy if the gun has nothing. But if the gun already has a plus one ergonomic sight on it, I wouldn't change it. I just don't think it's worth swapping. And that's like a super micro adjustment and just isn't worth it. Okay, so from here, we've gone from the original build with 47 ergonomics and 91 recoil to 52 ergonomics and 79 recoil, which is better on both. And I don't think we've spent that much. Yes, we've added some slightly more expensive parts, the CMMG and the ARE, but this build is just a little bit better. Like even if you swap this back, you'd still be better off than the original build. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna carry on going through all the parts and we're gonna readjust everything such that we can make the best gun that we really can. And the first place that I want to change something over is the Night Force ring mount. I've actually changed this on most of my builds over to the Guys Lee at this point, because rather than taking off one ergo, this adds an ergo, and we can just put the TAC-30 in, because that was what came with the gun. And this gives us two ergo together, because you get plus one from the Guys Lee in total, because it's like half from this part and half from this part. So we're going to go with that. I'm going to swap this over to the Growl, as we just discussed, and I'm actually going to put it on the MOE, because in this particular configuration, with the short barrel, this is something we haven't spoken about yet, but the short barrel versus the longer barrel is quite important for the SR25. And if you want to get to the minimum recoil, obviously you need to use the 20-inch barrel, but I don't really like doing it, because you lose so much ergonomics for the amount of recoil that you get, especially on a semi-auto gun, it simply doesn't seem worth it. And it's really hard to hit certain important breakpoints when you're using the longer barrel, because you add quite 
quite a bit of weight to the weapon as well. Like this isn't really comparable because we've got stuff on here and it's still lighter even without any attachments than the long version of the weapon. Makes quite a big difference. So in keeping with the shorter version, we can get to a point where the weapon doesn't overswing. This is a concept that we've talked about previously, where when you ADS your weapon, you don't get this weird swing in effect, which makes quite a big difference if you're trying to aim down sights and shoot accurately. Although you can see through the reticle, it's harder to get an accurate lock on your target because the reticle itself is still moving around while you're trying to aim which is really unfortunate and not really what you want and most of this is determined by weight but a little bit by ergonomics as well there's a calculator for this that i'll put down in the description that allows you to have a go with it and figure out whether you're within that threshold or not but with the shorter barrel it's a lot easier to keep within that threshold and so i'm going to keep on the sort of more recoil leaning stat parts on this because we get some ergonomics from keeping this shorter barrel on it's also cheaper too because the standard sr25 comes with a short barrel so in order to optimize this a lot we didn't do anything with the handguard before but the best one i'm pretty certain at this stage i've looked through all the different parts is the lancer mlock handguard so you stick this on it's a nice light little handguard we're going to use the mlock 4.1 inch rail and given we're changing everything over i'm going to go to the se5 which i do think is probably the best bang for buck two percent recoil reduction and eight ergonomics yes the rvg black is one ergo less but now we're talking about proper optimization from here we're going to use the cantilever mounts on both sides and this then adds one ergo for each one of those. And then instead of the Thunder Beast, we'll swap over to the QDC and the QDC suppressor. So now we're at 59 ergo and 73 vertical recoil, which is really getting quite good. So this build has no overswing and is really nice to use. The shorter barrel makes it slightly less cumbersome inside and the ergonomics is pretty high, as well as using the 25 rounder mags. Didn't discuss this before, but one of the reasons why the SR25 has still kind of kept up pace as not necessarily a meta gun, but one of the best guns in the game is that now it has this 25 round mag, which came from the spear and it shares with the MDR and the spear and the RSAS. So 25 rounds in the SR25 is extremely powerful and this makes the gun a little bit more appropriate to solo players. So the question here is how far can we take this before we start introducing some overswing? Well there is a build or two that you can use with the longer barrel so long as you're using a meta version of the weapon. So on the gas block here we're going to continue to add the CMMG, we're going to add the QDC back. This is now at 50 ergo and 67 vertical recoil and unfortunately here when you try to use this with the MOE stock you do get an overswing effect because the ergo and the weight is just not quite enough to keep you above that threshold. So when we swap over to the longer barrel, we do have to swap over to the Daniel's Defense and use the smaller pad to get to 54 ergo instead. That's just enough to eat you in. But we're really playing with fire at this stage, depending on what you're wearing, because the ergonomic negative penalties that you get from wearing armor and certain bags and helmets and that kind of thing, those can stack up and can actually take you over the threshold. So you have to be quite careful about what you wear, which is the reason why I would typically lean towards the shorter build because you don't really have to think about it so much you've got enough leeway not to worry about it whereas this you're really quite close to the edge of this threshold that we were talking about previously so yeah this is basically the lowest recoil build that you can get without introducing overswing into the weapon whilst you've got a fully loaded magazine with a 25 rounder there are ways to reduce the recoil a little bit more. Most people who've modified the SR25 previously will know that the RSAS does have lower recoil. You stick this on and you go to the SE5. You can also add a different gas block on this one, the GS6. And with that, that then allows you to you know, re-add your front sights. So we're going to put the Defiance back on here. There aren't any special cantilever mounts or anything that you could put on here. And that brings us to 47 ergonomics and 67 vertical recoil, which is a little bit better on vertical recoil. But with nearly six and a half kilograms on the gun, this thing swings around like crazy when you try to ADS. So if you want to be nice and sprightly and moving around the map and ADSing around the map in a quick time looking for targets, then this kind of build, I think it's just slightly too cumbersome. And it's also pretty expensive. You're probably better off going for something with higher ergo, less weight and moving down to the shorter barrel, which also saves on costs as well. So before you go, don't forget to check out the channel music on Spotify down in the description to help support what I do. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.